welcome along to Flossmas. This is the 4th of December. How are we doing? Technically, this is a Sunday. This would be the Sunday morning briefing. So if you're tuning in for the Sunday morning briefing and you've missed the previous three days of Flossmas, then you could go back and watch them all in one go. That would be fun. So today is Saturday for us, well for me, <clears throat> it's Saturday now, but you'll be seeing this on Sunday. We've had a busy day today, uh, it's been the karate party today. Ness does karate, um, she's a yellow belt, and her sensei is just the most amazing, uh, the most amazing guy. He puts so much effort into the classes for the kids, and then once a year he hires the same hall that they're in every week, and he produces um, a party, they had hot dogs, they had cakes, they had selection boxes, trophies, medals, um, patches for their geese, and he'd hired this big bouncy castle for them, all free, for, for no extra charge, which is absolutely amazing. She had a whale of a time, and she got a trophy for the most improved kata, which is amazing. So for those of you not familiar, a kata is like a series of movements. Um, I'm sure they have to be very specific and in a certain order. I would never be able to remember them, but she seems to know them well. So we went and did that. We started painting the kitchen this morning. Um, Chris said to me, oh, we'll, we'll get the kitchen painted today. Um, and as far as I could observe, he undid four screws and made about seven cups of coffee. And I painted the royal we, I would presume. I've got lots to share with you today. I have got the winners of two other competitions one which I've had this nagging feeling for the last two or three days that I've forgotten something there was something else I was meant to do that I've forgotten and I've remembered what it is which was a competition winner I've got another competition winner um, I have got a little bit of stitching I've got some haul I've been to the jingle ball um, I'll tell you a little bit about that so far um, what else have I got some past finishes advent calendars, freebies, the lot. So we're going to start off with a big advent calendar which I've put just out of my reach and I have just had a couple of minutes scan to find number four and it's here just above that horse. <coughs> so ah more kidnapped children. This time they are weaving. There we go waving to get out. These three kids are really busy. They've been looking at a book, peering out of a window, singing, and now they're waving out of a window. So they're busy. I think it's the same three kids. So there's that one. Right. What? <coughs> oh dear, here's this little annoying cough again. So what have I been stitching? I couldn't wait to have a little go at the blue flower Christmas hippo and maybe I should have waited maybe I should have waited I'm not as happy as I could be with my floss choices I think my hippo is perhaps a little bit more brownie than he could be um, I was looking back at the model stitch for this one and their hippo is a little bit more grey purple grey brown um, with a more of a pink underbelly I think he's okay there we go. But I do think I could have done a better job with the contrast of the two different colours. What I'm tempted to do is to stitch him a friend tail to tail um, so that they're kind of facing away from one another. I don't know, I've yet to put the hat on and sometimes that might, uh, with the white, might just change the balance a little bit. I'm stitching it on a piece of 32 count that I dyed myself for another project but I thought he was only small so I just do him in the corner down there because it reminded me kind of like swampy sort of colours. So there he is. Like I said we'll see. I'll put the rest of him in, give him another leg because he's missing a leg at the minute and the hat and see see how he looks but it's a beautiful little stitch really quite quick it's definitely you could do it in an evening speaking of the jingle ball i went along um and 
I went straight to the shops as I said I was going to and I think I bought seven PDFs. I think I bought seven PDFs. I bought um, the Blue Flowers, their exclusive one, Heartstring Samplies exclusive one, um, Teresa Kogut's exclusive two because I don't have enough Teresa Kogut in my life um, and a few other other patterns and I went along and there were so many stitching rooms that you could go into as well and I didn't have time to do that last night so I'm going to try this evening and see if I can go into a few of the stitching rooms and just do a little bit of stitching and meet a few people um, and things like that which I think would be great. I've seen some of the kits that were sent out for some of the classes that people got to sign up for and they looked amazing so I really hope Stephanie's going to do it again next year. I, As I said to you yesterday I wasn't sure kind of how much there would be for somebody who is in England, or I'm not in England, I'm in Wales, in the UK. But yeah, I, I stand corrected, there was definitely more. And I think next year I would be more of a Johnny on the spot for signing up for the, um, for the classes and things like that. So let me know if you've been into the Jingle Ball, what you have, what you've got. I haven't printed out my charts yet. I will print them out and I will show them to you. Um, but I'm gonna do that tomorrow because I wanna change the cartridges. Because I think one of them's blocked. More information than you possibly needed there. Okay, so competition winners, competition winners. On the same video that I'd done the competition for Winter Rose Manor, I did a competition for the Australia um, sampler from Mud Puppy Stitchery. And I'll put a picture of it up here. And the winner of that one was Amy Clayton. So Amy, if you can contact me by email or um, by DM on Instagram, then I will get your email address and send it to um, Mud Puppy Stitchery and then she can send you your chart. Congratulations. The second winner, the second competition. I keep putting things out of my reach. I'm silly. Now the second competition was my longest running competition. We had a competition after about month two for the year in the woods cell. And after about month two, I challenged you to have a look at the sneak peeks that they had on the Cottage Gardens sampling. See, even after a year, I can't say it. Cottage Gardens sampling's website and see if you could guess what animals you thought they were going to be. And the prize was going to be a fat quarter of fabric um, in a colour that you would like that I would dye for you okay so you can tell me roughly what colour you want you can try give me a DMC number and I'll, I'll do my best um, let me know what colour what count you want so the reason that I'd offered a piece of fabric was because I don't know if you remember but I had dyed my own fabrics to match the suggested fabrics from uh, Picture This Plus. So there was <coughs> like a blue, a brown, a turquoise, and then a dark blue as well, which is over there somewhere. And so that's why I'd suggested that I would dye a piece of fabric. Now, I checked the spreadsheet this morning of everybody's answers now that we know what all 12 of them are and there were three people who had guessed seven of the remaining ones right so seven out of the remaining ten which is not bad going really um, and those people were <coughs> Katie Jones, Gretchen Carraway and Sue Pellerin. So because they'd all guessed the right number what I've done is I've put their names into one of those fancy spinny wheel things, tiny decisions, um, and I'll show you what happened. So the winner was Katie Jones, congratulations Katie. So if you can message me on Instagram or um, email me with your choices, what you would like in terms of count and what you colour you would like me to try and aim for, then please do let me know if you want lots of mottling, not much mottling, whatever. If you've got a, a type of project in mind, give me some information and I will do my very best to see what I can come up with. Um, it's definitely not going to arrive with you before Christmas. 
but it will be the next time I get the dye pots out I will do your fabric and I've got a few fabrics that I want to dye so I'm hoping that it will be over Christmas that I get them out so you won't have too long to wait right let's have a look at the Marks and Spencers advent calendar day four Ooh. Philip Kingsley bodybuilding for the hair not something I generally have a problem with it's usually big <laughs> I'm usually trying to calm it down rather than fluff it up but you never know I have got quite a few Philip Kingsley products actually my mum swears by them so this may actually be coming to my mum because she's got much finer hair than me so I'll pop that there amongst the rest of the clutter on the loosely termed windowsill okay let's have a look at some previous stitching and I've picked out a couple of things I had a lovely reaction to my welcome summer yesterday so I have picked out my welcome autumn let me just fold the top down slightly there we go so this came as a kit so you'd think that would be the first step in getting all the, all the flosses in the right places wouldn't you no. there are some personalizations on this shall we say slight differences between me and the chart but not so as you'd notice so I love 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 that and like I said I've got two more in the pipeline I've got welcome Christmas and welcome winter the other one that I've got was literally an evening stitch as well this is heart in hand it's called round red sampler and there is the finish of it I stitched it in silks for you red and it's a piece of 32 count vintage country mocker I would imagine and so that will become the top of a box lid or something similar. I'll do freebie, haul and then the patchwork wrap it up in calendar. So my freebie today is by Crossetta Gogo, -Go, which could be how you pronounce it. Um, and this one is called Noel. Uh, it's their 2019 freebie, but it's a lovely wreath, lovely wreath design with Noel in the middle and then these white parts here there's little white berries so I just thought it was nice to have the white berries rather than the red berries and I thought if you did that on a nice like a darker fabric that white would really really pop it basically uses five different colors of DMC so three greens a red and a white I think that would be a prime candidate for a sulky um, conversion actually I think that would look really nice and sulky on 36 count which as you know is one of my favorite combos okay let's have a look at my haul uh, I'm gonna start off with the one which you could buy again if you wanted to the others I'm not sure about but this is definitely freely available so this is called hoot in a boot by the needles notion and as soon as I show you this in fact I'm going to take it out of the packet you will see why I loved it now I bought this from Jeff P Smith on on eBay they are in my sort of shops and sellers lists if you if you want to find them so this is hoot in a boot I just loved that I love the shape of the boot. I love the fact that there's an owl at the top. I love the pumpkins, the cat. I just think it's brilliant. A really fun take on a stocking in the shape of a witch's boot. It is stitched on 28 count Venetian stone linen from Witch Elf, which I know bizarrely um, arts and crafts in Fife in Scotland uh, not arts and crafts, arts and designs sorry, in Fife in Scotland 
uh, stock that particular colour because about three years ago somebody asked me if I knew where we could get it so I hope they still stock it um, but yeah and then you can stitch this little owl to go on the top so the size of the boot is 10 inches across by 13 inches up if you do it on um, 28 count and the owl is three inches across by five inches high so it's quite a substantial piece if you want to do it on 28 count and it's stitched in a mixture of DMC's and Gentle Arts so I love that love 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 and then these two I don't know how freely available they are well I know one of them's not freely available but this one is Little House Needleworks it's called In fact, I'm not sure what the whole thing's called because it comes in three parts. And I bought this from a stash unload. So the three parts, the first one is the weather vane. And the second part is north and south. And the third part is called East and West but I don't know let's have a little look and see at the chart I don't know what the overall thing is called whether I can find it on here so that's the the square pictures and then that is the weather vane. Okay, so <clears throat> when it means when it's saying east and west and north and south, it's actually talking about the pictures. So you get the whole weather vane in the first part, two pictures in the second part, two pictures in the third part. But I love that. I'm not entirely sure whether. I would actually stitch the outline of the boxes. I'm not 100% sure whether I would because I like it as it is, don't get me wrong, otherwise I wouldn't have bought it, but I just wonder, I think I'd do the one in the middle, but whether they would look good without the boxes or as good without the boxes, I don't know, but I really like that to the point where I may actually Kit that one up ready to start next year <clears throat> and then the last one I got I've wanted for a long long time <clears throat> um, and I remember Emily C from Eclectic Possessions stitching this uh, and I've wanted it that long so oh hang on hang on a minute I think I may have got more than a bargain for here, just a second. Ah, uh, no, she's just included an extra picture. There we go, that's okay. So I bought the kit, no, the chart and the leftover threads for this one which is called, um, oh, If I Were a King, that's it called. It's called If I Were a King. And it was a kit by RTO from 2016. And I looked and looked and looked for this and couldn't find it anywhere. I wouldn't stitch this background. I would choose a different fabric for her. And the fabrics or the fabric, the threads are on here. Now it may be that there is enough to stitch it again on here if I was only going to do it single stranded but I think probably what I'll do is I'll just match them to the DMC and then start with DMC so that I know everything is all all good. The reason that I said I think I might have got more than I bargained for was because there was another colour picture in here 
of this one. And this one's called Romantic Mademoiselle. And actually, this might have been the one that Emily seeded, Romantic Mademoiselle. Um, but this is a companion piece to it. So I'll be on the lookout for that one. But I love both of them. And like I say, I think it may have been Romantic Mademoiselle that Emily seeded. But either way, I love them both. Right, Patchwork Rabbit. So where we are so far a red and a green fantastically Christmassy let's have a look at number four see what we've got in number four Ooh. in number four we've got a very variegated one called Noel how fun is that That would make a great border floss, something where you could really see the colours changing. So there we go. I shall add that to my floss ring and I shall see you tomorrow. Stay classy, Stitches.